Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us here on the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. My name is Louisa Havers and I help high achievers, entrepreneurs and coaches lift the lid on life and business so that they can live at their highest value. Each episode, we will bring you our favorite founders, CEOs and guest experts to share with you their insights and strategies to expand your wealth consciousness, your spiritual leadership and aligned business strategies. We know that living in alignment with your soul's mission is what fulfills you and we are here to show you how to achieve this in an energetically aligned way. If you haven't already, be sure to claim your free abundance activation in the Akashic Records. Go to louisahavers.com forward slash gift to unlock your abundance activation today. And if you'd like my support in having aligned success in life and business, then contact me at www.louisahavers.com and let's explore together if it's an aligned match. Get ready to live at your highest value and to expand into your next level of money as you elevate and receive more. You create more for others. Righty ho, let's dive into today's episode. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. I'm so excited as I'm joined today by my dear friend and colleague, Kimberly Infazi in Gonama. And I cannot wait for you to listen in and join in our amazing conversation. We're going to have a conversation about being the multidimensional CEO. Let me introduce Kimberly by way of her bio and then we'll we'll dive right in. So Kimberly is the founder of Wildfire Global, a boutique firm for high impact conscious leaders and entrepreneurs. She envisages a world where diverse slate of empowered intuitive leaders are guiding the top corporations, businesses and political offices. Yes, please. Kimberly has mentored, advised, coached and sponsored hundreds of leaders over the years and her clients are courageous leaders with a proven track record of success who also have a deep longing to experience unfettered power so that they can experience more love, money, power, pleasures and respect in their lives with ease and grace. Thank you so much for being here, Kimberly. A huge welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you. It's, it's always good to be with you. So I appreciate your taking the time to spend with me today. I, I love being in your space. Oh, thank you. Likewise. Well, let's let's start at the beginning. There's so much to talk about. Um, you've had a phenomenal uh, corporate career um, before you ventured into your incredible business and how you're serving the planet now. What what led you to to start your business? Let's let's start there. Yeah. Okay. So yes, thank you. I did have a really beautiful, amazing corporate career. I was in corporate America for 21 years. I followed my father into the same business. That's a whole story in and of itself. Um, so it may be the same thing that took, that led me in is what led me out. Quite frankly, I had, I made the choice to join corporate America for some reasons that were my own, but some that were not. And when those, you know, spiritual contractual reasons were resolved, it was time for me to go. And I would not go Louisa. <laughs> Spirit, <laughs> Spirit was like, Hey, it's time for you. That that's done. It's time for you to do something else. And I, I couldn't see it. You know, like I was, very entrenched my personality was my identity was very involved in who I was as what I now know as corporate Barbie Kimberly. I loved her very, very much. Um, but you know, the perks were good. I had a clothing allowance, a car allowance, a gas allowance. Uh, and I kind of allowed myself to get shackled and bound mm -hmm. in that, even though I knew, the multi-dimensional version of myself was calling me forward to do something different to you know to do what i'm doing today and so i eventually i got fired and that was the only way spirit could get me out of there <laughs> and at the same time because i am a multi-dimensional being and intuitive and psychic i i literally saw it coming so i was taking steps in the last 18 to 24 months to prepare so i'd started this business um, and was slowly, you know, getting my, my feet wet as an entrepreneur. So it was, there was a, a transition period for me, which is what I tell a lot of people who want to come out of corporate 
and move into entrepreneurship, you know, remember where you put your exits and start planning so that um, you can stay in your power. Because if you simply get fired and you get knocked on your heels, it, it can be quite devastating. It was even still, you know, a bit of a, a traumatic experience for me. And I had plan I had made plans. So, you know, 18 months, 24 months later, here I, this is where I, you know, I came out on the other side, a little, a little uh, shaken, you mm -hmm. know, but not. So yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love how uh, the universe spirit had to go, right, she's not listening. We're going to have to give her a great big shove into the next yeah. part of your part of your journey. And oh, what a journey it's been. I mean, I, I've been blessed to be in masterminds with you and um, to, to share spaces with you. And one of the things when we were jumping on today, I was like, can you please change her name? <laughs> I'd love to know, um, yeah, the story behind that. What, what, how you this evolution? Yeah, okay. So, yeah, so it, it does sort of, it doesn't begin with corporate Barbie Kimberly, but that's a good place for us to hop in. So mm -hmm. I was that, all in on that. I loved my career. I was very successful I um, by, by all the standards, right? I said I had a really beautiful life on paper, which is true for most of my clients. We have this amazing, you know, all these, all these successes that are, you know, the 3D realm successes. And... I was also on this very spiritual path and over the last five years it's just i've continued to evolve i i say there's only one big question that we ever really need to answer and it is am i willing to consecrate my life to becoming my higher self and it's one question but it's the biggest question we can ask and answer so even as people hear me say it i want you to understand the magnitude of even just sitting with the question before you even dare to answer it for yourself. And so daring to answer that question over the last five years and recommitting every time I answer and then there's a new evolutionary track. And so the name change is a an output of another turn of the spiral for me in my life, returning to the ancestor who I came into this body to become. Mm -hmm. So Infezi Yama is a traditional Zulu name. I'm on a path of Sangoma, perhaps even Makosi, which is a Zulu um, ancestral wisdom tradition. And um, I just completed the first round of initiation. And as a part of that initiation, we're given our Zulu spirit name. So I've become a, I've remembered myself. I've remembered myself as a ancestral medicine woman. And so this is the name that my ancestors know me as. And the first name, Fezi, it represents my grandmother's and the second name, Ngunyama, represents the grandfather warrior spirits who walk with me that's so beautiful i just love that and it feels so divine kimberly it really does um i think one of the things when i think about you um is the the reverence that you have and the respect for your ancestors you always talk about you know speaking with your ancestors on a on a daily basis having that connection it's something that I, I love hearing you talk about actually, because it's just so powerful to be able to really honor the lineage of where we've each come from and all the wisdom that we're inherently holding as a result of that. Yeah, it's, I believe it is our source of power or one of our greatest sources of power. Um, and it does play into this, this um, this matrix that we're creating around really being our most authentic, powerful selves and being multidimensional. Because listen, you are the ancestor and the descendant. You're both simultaneously. You're all things. You know, as I sit here, I have a I have a daughter. 
So I will be the ancestor. She is the descendant. I have a mother. I have, you know, grandmothers and grandfathers. So we're always both. And some of us um, are indigenous to the planet. Like, you know, I know this is, this will be familiar, at least on a, on a subconscious level to your audience. There are many of us who came here by choice and we used, decided that there will be a point in time on this planet, in this realm, where our powers and our medicine mm -hmm. and our gifts and our talents would be needed. And so we are the ancestors of the of creation and we agree to be embodied here. This is what it means to be a multidimensional CEO. So whatever business you're running or whatever you know organization you're leading, you already know that you have access to these powers of intuition and intellect. You have access to these divine resources that are um, off planet, that are interplanetary, that are literally galactic because you are that thing. And that allows you to be the bridge between this realm and the others. And this is where our solutions for a better humanity are going to come from. They're not going to come from this realm because this realm quite quite frankly is messy mm. yeah i love what you're saying there around there's so much wisdom um in, in that what you just said there around being able the solutions that we're looking for are not going to come from this realm and being able to look beyond for the answers that are inherently within when we start to connect in and to connect with our um, ancestors, uh, our wisdom. I know people will speak of the different realms. We have a very spiritual audience um, within the Infinite Prosperity podcast. So everything you're saying will, will, will land. And, you know, we've got audiences with shamanic healers, Akashic record consultants, um, people with, that identify with diff different religions. Um, and I think it's, it's blessed that we can all come together um, to be able to, to have conversations like this. Um, but that that wisdom from not this plane is 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 so potent and the word power was really coming through this morning um and something that um I was guided that we needed to talk about to, today and um I know that you talk about power um a lot and how um so one of the questions I'd love to um ask you is really is how as female leaders do you see um, women being able to to use their power for for good moving forward and as the CEO in their business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gosh, what a great question. Um, yeah, so wildfire is is um, based on five pillars, if you will: love, money, power, pleasure, and medicine. Mm. And so that's also the answer to the question is as as women we're holding special source codes specific source codes um they're no better they're no you know more you know higher priority than the codes that men are holding but they're different and these keys are necessary um one of the first things i would say to female uh the high impact leaders is understand or at least try to try to understand or suspend your disbelief around the possibility that everything's inverted. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, in, in, the natural order of things, quite frankly, in my very strong opinion, is that women really are designed to be the leaders of the planet. And things are flipped. Mm -hmm. And so if we allow ourselves to entertain the possibility that things are inverted and if we then can extend that possibility and you know just daydream about it play with the idea that if things were flipped the other way how would we be leading ourselves how will we be leading our businesses how will we be leading our families how will we be leading you know um, how will we be in self-mastery what would it look like if we lived in a realm and dimension where women 
were leading the conversations, where, lit, where women had built the foundations and architected the political systems, what would be different? So just entertain that possibility and let that, let that drop in for you. And then decide that that's the world you wanna live in and then let's go create it. Because what I believe about powerful women, powerful women, is that we won't build a world where we disenfranchise men because powerful, intuitive, multidimensional, you know, women understand that we need that we need that 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 male energy because I'm not talking about gender, I'm talking about energetics, that mm -hmm. masculine energy within us as well. So, you know, I'm not going to disenfranchise the masculine because I can't rise without it and powerful women know that so we're leading from that place so it is a place of harmony and balance and temperance and equilibrium and true love yeah. that's why the pillars and we're creative i mean let's don't I, I really louisa i think it's time for us to have mature conversations adept conversations about all the powers it's why pleasure is a power and a pillar in, in the work that I do. Because if we try to, again, disenfranchise ourselves from our creative power, our sexual power, our sensuality, which is the stuff of creation, we miss the mark and that's a sin. So true, so true. I love how you're, you're, you're talking about really being able to embody all those aspects of ourselves. So it's not rejecting any part of ourselves, whether we're, if we reject the masculine energy within us, we're rejecting it outside. I always um, talk about, you know, the, in, the internal world is reflected in the external world. Um, mm -hmm. So we can use it as a way of going, oh, hang on a second. That's showing up. What, what within me has drawn that in so that it's a way of being able to go, ah, oh, am I rejecting something within myself, for example? Therefore, um, having attracted this in, I can now look at that. So I'm not rejecting that part of me um, that perhaps needs to be embodied uh, more fully. It's, it's exactly. the gift of the mirror, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. And that's where you become your most powerful self when you recognize exactly what you just said. It all is truly self. So if something is, I've attracted something or magnetized something that on some level I think, oh, I don't want that, or I don't, I don't like this, or I, I judge it as negative. I have to understand that it is me. I am the I am that I am, and I am the I am that I am not. Mm -hmm. So this multidimensional leader and the most powerful leaders, we we know this, and we don't. We're not mean to ourselves. We understand that it is every experience is valid. You know what I would say, especially to women, is please stop being mean to yourself. Please stop being mean to yourself. You're leaking power whenever you do, or whenever you are, and you 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 need that. We need you fully powered up, and so that is. You know, we've learned to be mean to ourselves as part of the matrix. That's part of the programming. So if you can make the decision to get the system out of your system and go back to that one big question of, am I willing to consecrate myself to be my higher self? And if that's a yes for you, then honestly, your capacity to be mean to yourself starts to fall away because your higher self understands things that you don't yet understand. It just won't allow it. So true. So much wisdom there. I love that question. We'll need to write that out in the show notes so people can really allow themselves to feel into it because I really, I love questions. One of the things I, I'm always talking about is living in the energy of the question because when we really allow ourselves to do that, like when you're sharing that question, you can feel the energetics around it. And really when you allow yourself to connect in with your higher self or however you would define your spiritual practice with that question, so much is going to open up and be shown to you. Um, I absolutely, yeah, absolutely love that. And I, I know that um, when you were talking earlier around being able to, uh, the power within us and, and how we can really embody that power um, and how we can 
stop <laughs> power leaks as you call them that's a that's a that's a writer down i think in terms of where we may be mean to ourselves etc if we're thinking about how we can prevent power leaks are there things that you do for your practice to sort of um i was going to say amplify the power within <clears throat> Yes, first of all, I am the best hype person for Kimberly and Fezzi and Gonyama on this planet. <laughs> <laughs> I hype myself up all the time. <laughs> Leading by example. I love it. <laughs> Listen, if you if I don't think I'm freaking great, who's going to think it? Who's going to believe it? You know? So, yes, on any given day, you might catch me dancing around this house i live on 10 acres and so i will be on the land dancing singing laughing and you know it it's playful yes but it's also really powerful because energy gets stuck in our bodies if we're not careful and if we're not very conscious of the fact mm -hmm. and you know one of the things that especially for, like for your audience because it's around you know prosperity understand where money lives in your body it's in your hips it's in that sacral chakra zone so if that energy is stuck we have to find ways to consciously in this realm mm. move that energy so you might see me here dancing singing and laughing but i'm truly activating all my prosperity <laughs> receptors i'm in full-on reception mode because keep in mind your body is literally an antenna you are the most advanced form of technology on this planet and beyond so some of the things that your ancestors knew to do you know my ancestors they were tribal so they danced a lot they moved a lot they jumped around a lot um that was not that was in part for ceremony and ritual but also because they knew something that we have forgotten in the western world our the literal mind body connection so i'm moving my body every day i am literally hyping myself up i uh, record a lot of voice memos this is one of my favorite power moves uh, i record a lot of voice memos to myself and i'll play them on a loop so good while I'm sleeping, right before I go to bed, if I want to do astral travel, you know, I'll, I'll put a special message on for that. I ask my ancestors and divine guides questions, and then I, it, um, I think of it as delegating up, Louisa. I will literally say, family, I need an answer to this question, and I need to know it before I wake up at six o'clock in the morning the next day. So many times, like especially religion has taught us that we pray, which is very important. I am definitely a praying woman. Mm. Pray and then wait. You know, there's a lot of waiting on God, especially in the black church where I grew up in the black Christian community. There's just a lot of you better wait on God. Okay, well, at the risk of sounding blasphemous because I really don't care, you are God. So for whom are you waiting? Mm. Start to delegate ask god you know i need answers this is a power play but we must not be afraid to use our power i will delegate out in a new york minute i will i will act, expect to receive an answer and and get it yes kimberly you've touched on something so powerful there because it is that um the energetics of waiting when we are waiting we're creating more waiting if we're waiting for the the answer um whereas when the, the shift that i'm hearing you speak to is that i'm expecting the answer <laughs> i'm expecting it right now and energetically like you said we're the most advanced technology out there when you're approaching it from a different energetic space the result is going to be different that's right that's right and there's you know there's an art and a science to it louisa so i'm expecting an answer mm -hmm. well i it's Beyond expectation, I try to release expectations. So let me let me do better hmm. for your your audience. I I have moved beyond belief in the answer that I deserve the answer or I'm worthy of the answer. I just know, hmm. right? I know in my body that the answer exists, and I know that because I asked the question, the answer wants to come to me. Hmm. I know that, in my body. I feel that. 
So then there's not a, I'm not required to wait. Now, the, <laughs> one of my teachers, the power of an infinite being is patience. So we hold that tension in our bodies and it's releasing control of the outcome. This is also a power move for the most powerful leaders on the planet. We know how to upgrade our frequency to gnosis so that we are not in the control frequency. Because when you're trying to control it, you're, you will not circumnavigate the wisdom of the universe. You're God mm -hmm. with a little So you're not going to overpower and overwhelm God with a big G. So trying to tell God how it's gonna happen is gonna, you know, it's putting you on a different, um, I wanna say it sweetly. I'll just say it's foolish, right? It's a fool's errand, it won't work. Yes. So, yeah. So also understanding how your power intersects with source power and how you're always connected to source power. So you don't really have, you don't need to control it. Mm. You don't need that anymore. Knowing you don't need to be in control is God a power move. Yes, yes, you, you're speaking my language. I love this so much. For me, one of the things I talk about in that moment where people will, helping people shift from waiting to that, that knowing, that faith that it is so, it is done, it is done, it is done, that to let go of the how, because that is a way people can trip themselves up along the journey thinking, because we try and think our way through things rather than being in that, actually I've activated the frequency and so therefore it is, it is done. Right. Easy. Right. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> I know some people when when you're in that space of it feeling like life is a struggle etc that can feel really frustrating for people is it like how do I get out of this I'm trying to activate the faith etc um, and to be able to develop that muscle it's like a spiritual muscle yes yes I love that it is a spiritual muscle and it's you know it's easy in the same way that you know the formula for losing weight is easy calories in calories everybody but the execution is where some of us can get tripped up so it's it's very easy to say you know just relax mm -hmm. it's, it's okay. tell the universe what you desire and then know that it's it's true and so and, and i don't take those words lightly because they are true mm -hmm. and i also understand how long it took me to really be able to do it well and still sometimes i get tripped up oh so i we're, we're saying it, um, but I know that your audience is adept enough to understand that we also have reverence for the journey that, you know, many of us take to get there because it is, it's counterintuitive mm -hmm. and it's everything we're not taught. <laughs> this uh, should be taught in schools, shouldn't it, for, for, for people. Can you imagine a world where when you come in and remember that we're multidimensional beings right from the that word go from being in in you know as we go into all that programming in school various places around the world what a different yes. place it would be yes yes what a yes what a beautiful place it would be right that's yeah. a beautiful it really really would it really would. I love um, this conversation around being a multidimensional CEO and being able to lead from that perspective rather than um, for me, as I was thinking about this topic, it, it, the, the balance of the divine feminine and, and masculine so that we can really embody that rather than being in that space of I've got to do, 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 do to be able to be the CEO um, and getting stuck in, in the the semantics of this plane and the expectations of this plane. And um, I love how um, intuitive you um, lead your business with the way of being able to really connect up um, and delegate up to be able to, to, make, those, to make those decisions. And I know that um, 
you know, that then we have to do as the human beings to have to go and do a little bit of implementation, of course, not to take that away from the, the humanist side of things. Um, I know that you were talking about a, a free gift that I just think really um, speaks to what we're talking about uh, today. Would you like to tell everyone a little bit about that? Because it sounds yeah. wonderful. Yeah, yeah, of course. Thank you. So the gift for today is my 5D board of directors activation. I created this because I needed it, quite frankly, when I was, <laughs> that's how most things occur around yeah. um, And it's a, it's about a 20, 30 minute activation journey where I guide you into a process where you sit and you call forward what I call your divine entourage this team of beings who are literally waiting for you across the realms and dimensions to delegate to them to call them forward to ask them questions these are it's a it's a team of spiritual in spirit advisors who want to guide you i was shocked and amazed at who showed up on my board um and so you'll sit quietly, you'll call forward your board, and then you will start to delegate to them in dream time. And then over time, uh, one of the things I love most about this activation, this ritual, is you can do it over and over again. You can call board meetings, just like we do in this realm. I'm a more than one board in the 3D realm. You know, when the, when the organization needs support, they call an emergency board meeting. You will begin to do that with your team. And you, you know, if you really allow yourself to suspend your disbelief about the possibility of how much support you really do have, it'll blow your mind and it'll blow the doors of your business open wider still. It has really amplified my work and the work of my clients. So that's the gift. And it's amazing. Yeah. Thank you, Kimberly. That is so generous. And yeah, I love what you're saying around having a, an emergency spiritual board board meeting because it's absolutely right isn't it? it's being able to use all these resources that we have these tools that we have and to know that you're fully supported always um in the higher realms is just such an incredible incredible gift. thank you so much that's so so generous as, as we're wrapping up our conversation around being the multi-dimensional ceo is there anything you think oh i wish louisa had asked me about that i wanted to speak to that is there anything that um is coming forward that you'd like to speak to in relation to that that we haven't cu covered yet well we've covered so much terrain um i will simply wrap it up by saying you know there are there are realms here too there are dimensions here so i invite you to to think about and feel your way into what are the the dimensions here that are asking for you to master because as we've been talking about you know being off planet i also have a lot of respect and appreciation for the fact that we came into human bodies so we have to embody all of this that's coming from these other places and so you know a lot of the work that we do or that i do is around mastering what it means to be a spirit having a human experience. So your relationships, your money, your sexuality, if you desire to be in sacred sexual union with a partner, you know, if you're a parent, conscious parenting, it's not all just off planet galactic stuff. Mm -hmm. We eat, work, live, play, make love in this realm. So the self mastery, the work is really about how do I be the best being the highest form of the being I came to be. So beautiful. Thank you so much. That's just fantastic. Oh, I'm so excited that you've come and joined us. I'd love to have you back on the show because I know we could talk forever about so many, so, you know, this and so many other things as well. How can um, people stay in your world, Kimberly? Where can they find you? Yes. Well, multidimensional being has to be everywhere, doesn't she? So I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on Facebook. It's Kimberly and Fessy and Gonyama. Uh, meet me on um, Instagram at That Wildfire Life. I'm on LinkedIn as Kimberly and Fessy and Gonyama. Um, and then I also have a Wildfire Facebook page. So I'm really everywhere. 
Oh, that's so wonderful. So yes, we'll come and check check you out on all the all the all the uh, all the planes, the social media planes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kimberly, for being here. Thank you to our listeners for joining us. This really has been a very, very special episode. So thank you, Kimberly. Thank you for all your wisdom, for your love, for, for being you. Thank you for everything you shared today. And please do come back. <laughs> it's been my pleasure. Thanks, Louisa. Thank you. Well, thank you, everybody who's joined us this week on the Infinite Prosperity podcast. Until our next episode, we will see you again all very soon. Sending you all lots and lots of love. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Infinite Prosperity podcast. And if you like what you've heard and want to know more, please go to louisahavers.com. We just appreciate you so much. So thank you for listening and hanging out with us. If there's anything that we can do for you, you can email us at louisa at louisahavers.com. Let my team know if you have any ideas for shows that you'd love to hear or topics you want me to talk about. Really looking forward to hearing from you. All right, that is it for this week, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for today. Looking forward to connecting with you again. Until next time, namaste.